Hello, great YouTubers. This is Kithi and welcome back to my channel, Engineering Made Easy. In this eighth part of my tutorial series, working with step seven, I'll walk you through how to download and debug a seven program using the MPI adapter. Let's get started. Before we start, I will urge everyone who is watching this video to subscribe and like. Also, don't forget to press the notification button so that you'll always be notified whenever I upload a new video. Right, so to start, we'll move to our screen. Okay, so we have our program started now. So we'll have a quick look at the MPA adapter. Okay, so the MPAI adapter, so it's having a USB port point, and then also the other point that connects to the PLC is the RS4485 connector point. So basically it looks like this. So we have the the point that connects to the PLC, which is the particular point. And then you have this section that you slot to your programmer, which is sorry, your laptop that holds the step seven program. Okay. So basically this is what you need to program if you have to use a physical PLC. But in our case, we'll be using the simulator, so we will not be physically using this one. To, I would like to introduce you to this very one so that you really understand and know what you are supposed to use in case you have a physical PLC that you want to download your program into. So the setup is basically like this. So you have this end connected to your PC. So this PC will be the one that is holding your step seven program. And then you have the MPI adapter sitting right in between. And then you have the other end connected to this db9 connector that the cpu of the siemens plc comes with so with uh, this is a, a 300 station with the 400 station you have the same port but with 400 station you have the flexibility of adding a cpu sorry a cpu which is the communication processor some of them are equipped with uh, internet ports so you can also program the cpu using the internet port but if you are having the P adapter, you can use it also to program the, the device. Okay, so we'll be using our getting started project. And because we are not using a physical PLC, I will start the simulator. And then we can see that the simulator is already started. Okay, so we have our simulator right here. So I will minimize it. And now to download all the project, including the hardware and then all the blocks, what I need to do is to go to Smartic 300 station, right click on it and then move to PLC. And then I can, we can see that we have a download here. I click on the download and then I say yes to download all. So it's telling me that uh, because we've already downloaded before, it's telling me that the block exists. I said, okay, you should download all the blocks. Then it will tell me that the PLC is in stop mode. Do I want to start the PLC? I say yes, we start the PLC. Okay, so when I come to this section, we can see that the PLC has started again. So basically, this is how you download the program. Now let's move on and then move to the OB1 to see whether indeed the program has been able to download correctly. Okay, so we are having our getting started program right here, our diesel engine and then the petrol engine. So I can now go online to see whether indeed my program downloaded correctly. And then we can see that indeed the program downloaded correctly. So basically, if you want to do an entire program download, then you can use this particular approach to download the entire program into the PLC. Then after you've downloaded the entire program, any time that you do editing of the program, then you can download that specific changes that you've done by using this approach of download, which is downloading only this particular block that you've created a change in. Okay, so from here we'll move on to our hardware configuration and then we'll see how we can do the bugging of our hardware okay so i move to hardware double click on it to open so 
So from uh, rest tab that we did previously, you can see that we have a CPU right here. We have the data input and then the data and then our data input plus the data output card. Okay. So to check the status of the CPU, what I need to do is to go online on the hardware configuration. So to go online on the hardware configuration, you move to the online icon and then you click on it. And basically, you can see that the interface has changed on top of it. You can see online right here. And then you can see that our hardware is, on, is online now. We can look at the status of the CPU. You can right click the CPU and either look at uh, model information here or you look at the operating mode of the CPU. So let's say for instance if your CPU moves into stop mode and you are remotely connected to the CPU, you can still turn the CPU on, not necessarily physically going to where the CPU is, but from the hardware configuration you can go to operating mode and then you can see the CPU status right here. So I can put the CPU to a stop right here. And then we can see that the CPU is in stop mode. So if I'm having a physical CPU, it should be in stop mode. So let me open the simulator since we are using the simulator. But we can see that the CPU is in stop mode. Okay. So I will turn the CPU back on right from the... Now the difference between a cold restart and a warm restart is that with cold restart, all your parameters will reset, which means if you are having a, a setup that is not within static, it will all reset. So it's always not advisable to use code restart if indeed you want to just restart the CPU with all your variables intact. You only do code restart when you indeed want to restart all your variables. So from here, I will do a warm restart and say yes. Okay, and then we can see that the CPU moves into round mode. I will physically go and check the CPU, and we can see that indeed it's in round mode. So basically, this is how you can restart the CPU, put the CPU in stop mode, or run the CPU using the hardware configuration. So I'll go off. The next thing you can do, you can also check the status of the CPU using the model information parameter right here. Okay, so right here, I can see that, I can see the status of my CPU. I can move through to diagnostic buffer. And then here you can see all the information concerning your CPU. We can see if the CPU is in alarm, we can see the alarm messages right here. You can see that the model transition from start up to run. You can see the timestamp for everything. Information on the the actual problem that occurred will be detailed right here. Okay, so in this mode, you can look at the, the issues you have on your CPU and then right, rectify them as such. You can also look at our memory, look at how uh, our program is occupying the uh, CPU memory. We can also look at the, the scan cycle of our program. So the more lengthy your program becomes, the more time it takes for the CPU to execute all your program. So we always advise that you keep your program very short and then well organized, well structured so that you don't increase your scan time of the CPU. Okay, we can look at the time system. We can look at the communication interface right here. And there are a lot of things that you can do right here with this particular interface. And we can see here that our CPU is in RAM mode and then it's indicating that it's in RAM mode. Okay. So for now, we will look at this few things. The next thing you can do, you can, you can also click on the interface, that is the digital input interface, and also monitor the status of the input cards right from your hardware configuration. So if I go to monitor and modify, and click on it. And we can see that I can see all the status of the card right here. I can go to monitor and then I can see if the input is turned on, I can really see whether it's turned on or not. So let's do an illustration. I'll go to the simulator 
and we can see that this input card is 0, 0.0 so i'll change one of my inputs bytes to zero and you can see that when i activate input 0, 0.0 sorry 0 0.1 you can see that it is on right here so from this particular section you can monitor the inputs that are coming or the signals that are coming on your input card whether it's true or false you can monitor them right here and if i turn it off you can see that it's off and turn it back on you can see that it's on right here and i can turn it back off so basically you can debug your program using this approach going into your hardware monitoring your input or output cards and looking at the status of all everything that is connected hardware wise to your plc okay so i'll close this and then i can go offline to go offline i click on this one and then i'm offline so basically although you are offline but you can see that you have two windows open one indicating that you are still online so it's always a good advice to close your online one so that you can only have your offline all right so viewers this brings us to the end of the part eight of our tutorial series working with step seven thank you very much and i hope this helps someone out there bye bye